So hello! On this channel we talk about independent spirituality and folk magic for free spirits. My name is Esther and in today's video I am bringing some tips, tips and tricks maybe, uh, for you to study your occult books rather than just reading them. When I was more active on TikTok, I actually got a lot of requests of people asking me to talk about how I annotate my books, because if you have seen my book reviews, you probably have noticed that I use a lot of highlighters and post-it uh, marks, like post-it notes, and sometimes I also write on the books. And for me personally, there is a whole system behind the whole thing, I'm not just using um, random colors or, you know, there's a little bit of a system. And also for those of you who don't know, I used to be a law student, I have a degree in law that I never used for anything, but I have it. <laughs> And during university, something that I did a lot was study, so I did learn how to um, get the best out of a text, let's say. So I'm gonna share with you how I like to do like my reading of occult uh, books so I can get the most out of the text that I am reading. So first of all, you need to keep in mind that uh, occult books, they are not fiction. They are not like meant to be literal literary entertainment, like you're not picking up some Agatha Christie here. These are educational, informative texts and you should look at them as such. It's not entertainment, it's not fiction, it's occult knowledge. So that's one thing, having the right mindset when you are going into a text. So personally, I look at occult books as textbooks because that's what they are, as a matter of fact. And what do you do with textbooks? You write on them mercilessly with no pity. I know that some people don't like to write on their books, but this is not fiction. This is a textbook and textbooks are meant to be written on. I got one example here of a book I've read a while ago. You can check out the review on the cards up here and also in the description down below, which is the classic, the marvelous, the outstanding Consorting with Spirits by Jason Miller. So first of all, I already found a page here that has something interesting for me to, uh, to show you. It's page 126. So over here, you can see there is a lot of highlighter. I usually utilize multiple different highlighters. Let me see if it was the case here. If you can notice a change of color. I didn't change the color for this one. Yeah, you, you can see purple and pink because every a yellow, you see, every purse of mine, in every single purse and backpack, I have one highlighter, uh, post-it notes like this one, and a pencil. So if I have a book with me and I'm reading and I feel like tagging the page or highlighting something or writing something down, I have the tools for it and they are not always in the same color so I have no problem having multiple different highlighter colors on my books that's okay with me but here on this page you can have an example of a little something so I tag my books at the top here these are things that I consider useful useful information practical things that I could actually do and use. So I tag them up here so they are easy to find and I can copy to my grimoire. I have copied a thing or two from this book to my personal grimoire. So here, for example, what do we have here? He's talking about a conjuring kit. So I wanted to copy the most important things uh, of this information here. And what would I copy? I would copy the highlighted parts. So when I was back in university, how did I study law texts? I would read them, highlighting everything that I found important or like everything that I would need to remember for my texts, for my tests. 
and whatnot. That would be reading number one. Then I would run a second reading, only reading the highlighted parts. And then finally, I would copy the highlighted parts from the book to my personal notebook. I don't do exactly that with occult books because that would be a lot of reading and I'm not needing to memorize everything for a test. <laughs> So what I do is to highlight, like not highlight, but tag the useful information at the top so I know where it is and if it is something that I really want to uh, reproduce to my practice, I'm gonna copy it to my grimoire later on. Let me see if I can find something else that I wrote. I don't really write a lot on my books. I usually make little emojis, little hearts and smiley faces or sad faces and short phrases like that one I have just shown you, uh, copy to grimoire. I don't write a lot, but highlighters and post-it notes, they are like a staple, they are a must on my occult books. So usually the post-it notes, the post-it tabs at the top, they are blue. In, in this case, I don't remember why I used blue post-it notes on the sides as well. They were also, uh, they were tagging very important information, very interesting information, but not necessarily something that I would uh, use in my practice or copy to my grimoire. And so the ones at the top are things that I can use in my practice or that I want to use in my practice. And the things on the side, they symbolize things that I just found interesting or remarkable or, you know, things that I would like to look back at in another moment. Let me see if I can get another example of a book here. I got other two books from my bookshelf. For example, Utterly Wicked by Dorothy Morrison. This is a very good book, by the way. I don't think I have reviewed it on the channel, at least not yet. And this book has a lot of post-it tabs all over it. This book is so good, my God. Usually I choose a color, a color theme for a book when I start reading it. Sometimes I put another color because on a different bag I didn't have pink for example, I didn't have the pink post-it on my backpack and then I used the yellow or the green and then uh, back home I have the, the pink post-it. Anyway, and at the top it's always going to be blue or most of the time at least. Maybe I ran out of blue over here. <laughs> Let me see if I can find something interesting to show any kind of example of something. Don't be sorry of highlighting the pages. Paper is meant to be written on, you guys. So here I wrote a little something with my pencil and for some reason I don't like to write with pen on my books. I don't really know why. So I write a few things when I feel the need for that in pencil. And here with the Herbal Alchemist's Handbook by Karen Harrison, we have an example of a book that you don't necessarily need to read from cover to cover. Um, I see this book more as a catalog that you can consult. So I just tagged everything that is important, like the categories in which the book is divided. Like for example, the first tab here, Herbs of the Sun, second tab, Herbs of the Moon, third tab, Herbs of Mars, because in this book she did this division of like planetary correspondences. And then what's the other part? In yellow, the types of um, recipes that she shares. So like elixirs, uh, fluid condensers, then there's what? Amulets, 
bath salts and bath herbs. So in green, the planetary correspondences, in yellow, some recipes that she shares. There is a blue note here uh, showing where uh, the materia magica of the book starts with like talking about uh, specific plants. And at the top, there are some blue post-its, as you can see, with more specific like correspondences and uh, energy, planetary energy affinities. So depending on the book, you can do this kind of structure just so it is easier for you to find the information uh, right away, just through the post-its. And there is a book that I've written a little bit more on, the Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs by Scott Cunningham, because I have some other correspondences of my own uh, for certain plants, as well as some information that I found was missing. So like for example over here for Poppy, I've added some information that I, I had from somewhere else. I sometimes wrote like different uh, names that the plant is known by. Over here in Mugwort, I added the information that uh, the smoke of burned Mugwort can be toxic to animals. That is very important if you have pets or animals in general around and most books don't mention that it is mugwort and lavender if i'm not mistaken the smoke is toxic to animals this is another example of a book that you don't need to read from cover to cover and i have just tagged a few uh, herbs that i use more often in my practice that are more significant to me so i can easily just you know, reach out to them right away. So at the end of the day, what can you take out from this video? You need to create your own system. I suggest you to have your own color coding. Like me, for example, I have the thing of putting tabs at the top and on the side, but the tabs at the top mean something different and they have a specific color to them. Uh, you can do something similar, but picking your own colors for it. So yeah, my advice for you is to find your own little method. You can also color code with highlighters. That's something that I don't do <laughs> because my highlighters are much more like random and chaotic. <laughs> because often I am reading on the go and I have to use what I have available in my bag. But if there is a piece of information that you really want to uh, memorize and get uh, in your brain for whatever reason, for me, what really um, works to memorize information is to write it down. I am the type of student that needs to write things down in order to like uh, register them in my mind. Some people are more visual, so maybe you would need uh, illustrations on your grimoire beside, uh, like to the side of the information, just so you can visually uh, see what you are trying to memorize or learn. And some other people, they are more like learn through experience, learn through practice. So if there's something that you found in the book that could be useful for your personal practice, instead of writing it down somewhere, I mean, it could also be a good idea to write it down so you have you have it like more easily. But if you don't feel the need, you can just uh, put a post-it note on it, on the book, uh, jump right to it using the book. And like having a book stand like this uh, really helps when it comes to keeping books open. But instead of copying the information to your grimoire, you can just practice it right away and check the results. Some people learn better through just practicing so maybe that's your case. You have to figure it out for yourself and see what works best for you. Copying, highlighting, uh, practicing immediately or like adding illustrations to your grimoire. You have to take a look uh, and see what works best for you. But either way, I hope that this video could give you a few ideas of how you can annotate your books and how you can get like the best out of the texts you're reading so you don't close a book after finishing reading it with the feeling that you didn't really absorb anything and 
like you don't even know where the most important things of the book are located in it and you basically lose the information right after reading. By developing your own uh, annotation system, you will be able to get much more from a book that you're reading. I hope this video gave you some ideas and if you liked what you saw here today, make sure to take a look at my Patreon page and also the YouTube subscriptions because on those platforms I share exclusive bonus content for only one cup of coffee per month. There are spell tutorials, weekly divination, unfiltered book reviews, life updates that I only share with members and much more. Thank you so much for watching and remember, practice makes perfect. So let's get rich in. Bye bye.